It's like a workout. <laughs> <laughs> it is the three, two, one. Hey, everybody. I'm Lauren Khalil with Morning Chalk Up. And today we have South African CrossFit Games athlete. She made her rookie debut this year, Michelle Baznat. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Have you been enjoying some off time for the off season after a crazy game season? Yes, it's been uh, very nice to have some downtime for sure. Is there anything fun that you did? A little bit of traveling, see any friends to catch up um, with? No, nothing super crazy. I've, I've definitely caught up with friends, um, you know, got out to eat at a few more restaurants and gotten in the sun a little bit more uh, to try to enjoy the last couple of weeks of summer. Um, but nothing too wild. Just kind of got back into work slowly. <laughs> yeah. With um, uh, real estate, right? You're a realtor? I am. I do that kind of part time. I got my license during COVID, but I'm a full time CrossFit coach at my gym. So that's my my main job is coaching um, and personal training. And then the real estate I've just kind of picked up on the side. So since you got done with the games and had your off season and are a CrossFit coach, is it hard to, you know, not jump into some of those workouts and get right back into it because you're coaching other athletes, too? I I was ready to pull back quite a bit. Um, I actually got COVID right after the games. So um, oh I know, yeah. So I was out for, you know, two weeks or so um, out of the gym and just chilling in that sense. Um, mm -hmm. And then slowly getting back into moving. I thought maybe like after those two weeks, I'd be ready to move around and stuff. But my head was still kind of like, I want a little bit longer of a break. So mm -hmm. We, we got back into some bodybuilding, some really light cardio, and only within uh, the last two weeks. So I think last week was my first week starting back on a true cycle um, and getting back into Metcons and heavy lifting and things like that. So it's probably taken me a little bit longer than most, um, but we're still kind of getting back into training. I was ready okay. to coach again, though. I do love coaching. Yeah, no, that's so awesome. But um, it sounds like... I don't think that you got super sick from COVID. It was just mild symptoms for you. Yeah, it was pretty mild. I had like two rough days. Um, I think the weirdest part for me was losing my my taste and my smell. It also like killed my appetite. So, you know, you come off this huge prep and you want to like eat and enjoy things and like go out and stuff. And I didn't want to do any of that. I didn't want to eat anything. I had no appetite. So it was like probably three weeks after the games, I was trying to like enjoy food. And I was like, I'm a little late for this, but um, yeah, yeah I, I got yeah, COVID, though. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible. Okay. And now you're starting to get back into training and that's been going well for you. Yeah, it's been good. Um, physically, I feel really good mentally. That's the thing that I'm kind of just slowly getting my, myself back into, um, you know, taking on just all the aspects of training, the nutrition, the mobility, like, you know, it's it takes a lot of time in your day. So I'm kind of slowly stacking one thing on top of the other. So what does a training day look like now as you slowly get back into it versus like the amp up just a couple of weeks or even a month out from the games? Um, it's definitely more relaxed. Um, you know, I, I actually had to switch up my routine a little bit. I have, I don't know if you can see it. There's like a, my training board behind me. here. Um, yeah. So I, I started doing my sessions in the morning um, before the games, I was kind of doing them towards the afternoon, but I also coach in the afternoon. So I was kind of putting a bit of stress on my training to do it a bit faster. So I switched my routine, um, started hitting pieces in the morning and doing some PT mobility accessory work in the afternoon to kind of break it up and create a little less stress around it. Um, but really just trying to find that consistency, consistency and find that schedule again, you know? Sure, because you don't want to go fully back into it and then burn out so early in the season, yes. especially with this past season. Um, it was so new with the format and the way things went. How were you able to kind of plan getting ready for each stage between the open, quarterfinals, semifinals, and then leading up to the games? It was kind of just, you, we kind of just had to wing it because we weren't sure how it was going to go. It was the first time we did that layout. Um, and so, you know, we do, we kind of had a prep for each during the open. It's not like I needed to be super, super peaked. So that peak was kind of hitting towards the semifinal. And then obviously the games, if we made it there. Um, so we just had to kind of play it by ear, me and my coach. Um, mm -hmm. I do think I 
maybe like over prepped a little bit or I just didn't rest enough for the amount of prep I was doing because that definitely hit me hard when I got to the games. Um, but we kind of had to figure it out as we went, I guess. Sure. Well, because I saw you had a post on Instagram that it was a little bit of a reflection of the games. You didn't get super in depth, but you pretty much said that you felt good the whole season. You felt like you were peaking at the right times, but then there was some kind of disconnect once you finally got to the games. Is it because there were so many different events that you had to peak for and it being your rookie year at the games? There's so there's so many unknowns with that. Yeah. And, you know, well, with the just the games itself for me and my coach, we've had this as a goal. You know, I've had this as a goal in my head for like five years. So you have something up here and you, I don't know what it's like. I don't know what to expect. It's brand new. So just the experience of it alone was very like overwhelming. Um, but I, I, physically was prepped. I physically was very capable of doing all the movements at the games. Um, mentally though, I burnt out pretty fast by day two. I was really struggling. Like, I mean, I woke up day two and it's like my head was in a completely different spot. So that was very eye opening. Um, it's, it's just, it's not something I really thought of and it's not something that I had experienced before, but that meant mentality of like being able to push for that one not burning out too quickly, I see now is super important. So I think we prepped correctly. I think my programming was correct. You know, we dabbled on everything. I think maybe we overdid it towards the games a little bit at the end, or I just didn't rest enough to like combat the amount of training I was doing. And I think that's where the dis disconnect happened. And that's what <laughs> killed me day two. It's like, cause I told my coach, I, when we finished Friday night and like just kind of reflecting, I was still pretty upset. You know, nobody, nobody wants to get cut. Um, no. But it was like, I, I don't think I could have done another day just mentally. Like I was just so yeah. taxed and um, I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> so if I think of it, I'll let you know. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, but that's, that's kind of how it went for me. So. Okay. Let's actually take a step back before the games. Um, you know, you got through the open, you got through quarterfinals and then semifinal. You trained in North Carolina at CrossFit Cornelius, but then the semifinal would be in your home country of South Africa. Yes. I yeah. mean, that had to be incredible. You've lived in the States for most of your life, I think, um, since you were a young child. But um, I imagine you still have family in South Africa that could come support you or that you could come catch up with. Yes. Yeah. That was so awesome to experience. Um, I had a lot of family out there, a lot of family friends. Um, so they were super supportive and it was nice to just be able to share that with them, you know, cause they, they don't get to see it very often. Um, so it was very cool and it's a, it's a pretty big trip. So it was, um, it was kind of hectic getting out there and getting settled and getting into everything, but it worked out really well. And I'm, I'm very grateful that I got to compete in person, you know, cause some people did not, and I prefer competing in person. So it was just a great experience and it's always a great comp. That's the second time I've done um, fittest in Cape town and they, they do a great job. Do you think that having the support of your family and some relatives that maybe you haven't seen in a while um, kind of ignited the fire because there was only one ticket on the line <laughs> to get to the games from the competition <laughs> and you, and you, that, is what got your ticket for your first year at the CrossFit Games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's there's definitely that like added pressure, but it's something that you try not to acknowledge in a sense, you know, because you're like, you know, it's there, you know, that they're watching and, you know, you want to show them what you can do. But um, you really just have to focus on that, that one workout at a time. That's just what's right in front of you, you know. Right. And it was so cool that you did get to compete in person because mm -hmm. before that competition, uh, that semifinal, how long had it been since you were able to compete against people next so to you? I, I think I did some, oh, I did some local comps the year before. Um, cause you know, everything shut down all the, uh, sanctionals at the time, you know, were gone. And I'm really glad I did those local competitions. Quite a few of them, um, around me had turned some, like had made elite divisions. So I got to compete against oh. other, basically semi-finalist athletes um which was good and it kind of like kept the season going so it hadn't been too long since i had uh done a competition just obviously 
not at such a high level for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that really helped. I think if I hadn't done some local comps, it, it would have been very weird getting into the competition. So that did help out. And I think everybody after like that first workout, their nerves started to calm down a little bit and we're like, oh, okay, this is how it feels. We're like back <laughs> again. Like it just was different for sure. Do you enjoy anything about virtual competitions? No, <laughs> no, not at all. Like I just, I've never liked the open since I started CrossFit. Like it's just been my least favorite thing. And, but it's part of our season. It's, it's our stepping stone on how we get to those um, higher levels and everything. So we got to do it. Um, or even just some of the bigger competitions, you know, like Wadapalooza or Dubai, mm -hmm. you have to do it online. So uh, it's one of those things that my coach is like, well, good, you're going to do it. <laughs> That's just part of it. Yeah. And being able to compete in person before you made it to the games, I'm sure that made it a little nicer and not such a shock to your system. I mean, there were so many new things for you this year, of course, the format for everyone, but also it being your rookie year, there's so many unknowns and Dave Castro makes it so that there's so many unknowns. Yes. What were some of the initial thoughts once you got to Madison and, you know, stepped on the competition floor for the first time? Um, well, I guess the first one was the, the swim workout. Um, and so I just, I was, if people say, you know, like, just take it all in, like, just enjoy it, like really just be in the moment. And it's really hard to do that, especially your first year, even stepping on like into the arena you're it's huge there's like these lights and it's very good energy it's awesome but at the same time you're just like i have this one task i have to do like i'm so focused on this that it's very hard to enjoy the moment i guess and maybe i'll learn that as the years go on if i continue to qualify um but it, for me a lot of it was overwhelming um and so i was just trying to navigate <laughs> staying in a positive focused a headspace you know and still enjoying it as much as i could is it hard to, you know, once you hear that three, two, one, go, is it hard to put the blinders on when you're in a setting like the Coliseum and you have the music going and you have all the fans and you have, you know, the best of the best competing next to you? Is it hard to really get dialed into that task at hand? Yes. And I feel like a lot of that comes from what you practice, you know, like really dialing in that mentality or your focus when you're in your own gym. Um, because you never, I always say I can practice, you know, as much as I want when I'm in my gym and you never know how it's going to go in competition. Like it's all good <laughs> till you get punched in the face, you know, yeah. but I did, I had one workout that, um, Tia was in the lane next to me and like, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is good <laughs> you know, <laughs> for anybody. That's just like intimidating. I mean, she's amazing. And so, um, my coach knew that I think when I, was leaving to go do that workout and he didn't tell me. And so I was just like, you know, like fist bump to you. You got a girl, like <laughs> and go out there and pretend, pretend like you're doing your own thing. Pretend like she's not there. Cause it's, it's all you can do. You have to, like people say, stay in your lane and, and focus, but it does get tricky at times for sure. Especially when things start to maybe not go your way. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to, you know, you have a game plan of what you want to do. And the minute that stops happening, okay, I either, figure out another game plan or, you know, try to ignore those negative thoughts or like take on that pressure within that moment. Do you do a lot of mindset training during the season to get ready for moments like that? Um, to a degree, not so much. I, I really just try to dial it in when I'm doing those workouts. And I mean, my mindset in a sense kind of failed me towards the end of my competition this year. So maybe that's something that I need to implement a little bit more. Um, but I, I don't have too many techniques that I really use. Like I'm not huge on reading or like meditating or anything like that. Um, I know that does work for some athletes, but for me, like I try not to take on too many things because I work and train and like mm -hmm. there's so much that I can only handle so much in my day, you know? Um, but it would probably be good to maybe find a thing or two um, to help me focus my mind a little bit better or at least just keep it in check. I feel like I can focus well in a workout. It's just like I got my mind got a bit tired a little too fast. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a long weekend. Uh, getting ready for all of that volume. Do you have like a weekend or a week where your coach will give you um, like upwards of 10, 12 workouts to get done in 
a, a short amount of days or like a time frame? Yes. Yeah. We, um, we peach like that, that we would do a mock weekend almost. So we, um, change work schedules and everything. So we could do like a Wednesday, Thursday off, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and those are, those are long weekends. Those are heavy weekends. And, but that's what you want. You kind of want to simulate as much of that volume and pressure throughout the weekend as you can. Um, which again, I think we did a good job of, um, but you just have to rest with the amount you push, you know, you, you feel so good when you're at your peak. Sometimes you forget that like, you also have to chill out a little bit. Yeah. I mean, as professional athletes, it's probably hard to just sit and be without <laughs> doing anything sometimes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm always curious, especially for the rookies, when you get to the games, you know, it's game face. Everybody has their routine and little things that they do to help them set themselves up for success for each event. But um, did you build any friendships or connections or what is it like that people like me and the other spectators don't see uh, mm -hmm. that's not advertised on the Coliseum floor or um, yeah. when you're out there working out? I, I definitely think, you know, the first time the group, the men and women are all together. It's just that like first awkward, like, you know, nobody knows each other type of thing. Um, you can definitely tell the athletes that have been doing this year over year that know each other. They're much more friendly with each other. They're much more comfortable in that setting. At least that's what I saw. It's like, that was their, it's game time. Like it's their, they know what's going on. They know what's about to happen. They're chill in the background of things. Um, when we're, going on to the competition floor, things got a little bit more serious. Um, I made a few friends, which was nice. And there were also moments where it was like, nobody was talking to anybody and the bus rides were, uh, you know, I was sitting by myself. <laughs> so it just, you know, I mean, it's just like, it's just part of it. You, you have to understand that like at the end of the day, you're not there to make friends. Mm -hmm. It's always nice because, you know, we have a lot in common and we, everybody does the same thing. Um, but for the most part, I think it's just like, whether or not you click with people and um, but when it's time to compete that, you know, everybody's kind of in their zone. So it's game time. It's game time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. so fueling for each event, I, I mean, we've talked to several different athletes about, you know, how they get all of the calories in and how, you know, if you ask somebody who doesn't do CrossFit, right, maybe even people who are newer to CrossFit, they think that you guys are eating around like 2000 calories when you perform, but I imagine to get through, um, all of Dave Castro's workouts, you need more than just the, the standard 2000 calories. Um, how do you get all of those calories in throughout the day? And even, you know, you may not have a microwave to heat stuff up quick mm -hmm. or an oven or a stovetop. Um, how, how do you do it? So I, my coach, um, I work with Mike Malloy at um, M2 Performance, and um, mm -hmm. I've been with him for a couple of years. He's great. He works with a lot of other athletes. And he told me, he was like, look, you're going to need a cooler. You're going to need all these easy snacks like baby food, you know, sugary things that you can just get down quickly. You're going to need to have them with you. And so the first day, like I had my stuff, um, but I like struggled to get food in and just make myself eat a little bit. Um, and that quickly – it quickly caught up to me the hydration and the food on the first day I realized by the third workout I was like okay I'm my energy's gone I'm under fueled and by the fourth workout I was cramping off the floor because I didn't hydrate enough so I'm like okay good stuff so by the second day not to learn like, the hard way <laughs> yeah I laid out my food a little bit better I did like easy chicken sandwiches and um I did a lot of gummy bears a lot of baby food and basically like every 30 minutes to an hour, I was just snacking on something. Mm -hmm. Um, and that my energy throughout that day was a lot better, but it's hard to gauge the part that I didn't realize that plays a role. I think as well is like, we got corralled at about eight 30 one day and we weren't done till like seven. And so you're, you're not, you're competing four times in the day, but you're back in the arena the entire day. So you're just sitting around, you're waiting. So to go up and down in like warm ups and then cooling down, warm up, cool down. It takes a lot of energy. So learning to fuel myself in that environment was very interesting. And you do have to eat just a ridiculous amount. Like, I mean, three to 4,000 calories. It's just, it's just a lot for sure. For yeah. Sure. I believe that it, at some point 
uh, you get palate fatigue and it becomes a little bit of a chore, but it's such yeah. a necessity to make sure that you're ready for the next event. That's very true. I remember talking to some athletes that had like, I think someone had like chicken and sweet potato, or chicken and rice. And they're just like, oh God, I don't want to eat this. I'm like, you don't want to buy my sandwich? Like, I don't, like, don't want to eat a whole meal right now. I want to just like snack on a bagel or like, you know, yeah. so it's like the quality of your nutrition at, is, isn't, isn't as important as like just getting the fuel in. And because you're so taxed, like you don't want to eat a bowl of rice, you know, so but a peanut butter bagel go down a little bit faster. <laughs> That sounds a lot better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you finish your rookie year, 32nd. Um, what, I, I mean, what are some of those takeaways or things that you're proud of when you look back on your first games experience? That's a good question. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I've like reflected too much on that. Um, I, I am happy with, um, my swim workout that was pretty good um i'm trying to think of what else we had that day swim the run the pig workout was a good one for me um i've always struggled with metcons um i'm, I'm like a strength more of a strength athlete um so just really like dialing into some of those workouts and pushing um in my metcons i'm like happy about but for me i think a lot of it was just learning like learning how to eat and learning how to stay focused or re redial things in, um, even learning how to like what bags I need to bring with me. The first day I had like five bags on me and I look over and like Tia and Kara are like walking down with a rolling bag. And I was like, that's smart. Suitcase that's for next nice. year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like, uh, you know, performance wise, um, I don't know if I have something necessarily specific, mm -hmm. um, but just the amount that I've learned and the takeaways and kind of what I know I want to do or change moving forward. Um, I am happy that I have that. Uh, Cause it was, it was a little bit of a bittersweet thing for me, the games, you know, I didn't execute or I didn't perform the way I wanted to, especially the second day. So it's like, I'm a little still, still a little salty about it. Um, but you know, you gotta, you only get highs if you have lows. So, well, that's my takeaway. Sure. And that I'm sure is going to fuel your next season. So what does training look like as you get ready for, I can't believe it, but the open is only five months wow. away already. <laughs> yeah. And that's like nothing. It feels like nothing yeah. right now. I'm like, it's going to be here before I know it. Um, <laughs> It's it right now. It's just going to be a lot of like building blocks again. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to do too much like major volume or, or honestly, I'm not my mindset on it is I'm not going to take on being too strict on myself until I kind of get into that time frame more around January. Um, so consistency in my training, my eating, my sleeping sleep's a big thing for me that I've been kind of inconsistent with. So it's something that I need to change um, moving forward. But right now we're two sessions a day uh, and just slowly, slowly building into things. Well, Michelle, we are so excited to see um, you and everything that you're going to do. Are there any off season uh, uh, events, CrossFit events that you're looking to be part of? Um, I would love to do the Dubai uh, Fitness Championship. I think that would be awesome. Canceled. Yeah, they had an announcement. Yeah, just a couple of days ago. Yeah, yes. because they're using the Center for COVID testing. So even though they had it booked, there's nothing they can do. That is such a bummer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, they were doing invites. I mean, you know. So I don't. I don't know that I have, if I would have gone, but um, I do think that's an amazing comp. Maybe 2022, we'll see you there. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, Waterpalooza is always, you know, a good one. So maybe shoot yeah. for that. Um, I will I will do some competition before the games come around again, um, but we're not quite sure what. There's one in Texas maybe as well. Um, so some, something will happen, but not sure what it is yet. Well, we look forward to seeing you at those events and hopefully the 2022 games. I know it's crazy to think we're already getting into the 2022 season, but it's going to be here and we look forward to seeing everything that you can do, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.